Hi there, welcome to our first video showcasing the postcards of the Machine Gun Corps for MGC 2022. That's the 100th anniversary, the centenary of the disbandment of the Machine Gun Corps on the 15th of July 1922. We're putting together a, a series of events and programmes uh, throughout this year and one of those is to share every day at 19.22, so 7.22pm, a postcard from the collection of Graham Sacker. Now Graham runs the Machine Gun Corps database, approximately 120,000 uh, records relating to Machine Gun Corps soldiers. Um, varying in information but if you have any research related to an individual then get hold of Graham um, through the links in this video etc etc uh, and you know and, and ask him and, and, and help him support that um, help him build that database by sending in your information as well these postcards are what Graham's collected over the years uh, and what I've said to do uh, I want to do is to build build up the photo analysis of those so we learn from them as well so every week I will be uh, with, with some friends and, and, and other people involved as well uh, sharing some detailed photo analysis of the seven photos that week. So patrons will get a preview. Please do sign up and support what we're doing this year at www.patreon.com forward slash Vickers MG um, because you'll get involved in, in more than just the online material, I'm sure. Um, we've got publishing jobs and and everything you know going on this year, including hopefully a, a fire firing shoot at some point too, um, and you know and just subscribe, like, share, etc., etc., uh, and everybody else will be able to review the photos and the commentary at the end of the week. So without further ado, here are the first seven postcards of twenty twenty two with analysis of the front, the back, the guns, the uniforms, etc. etc. Uh, I made some mistakes in recording these, so rather than the annotations on a couple of the photos, you've got zooming in and zooming out. Hope it's not too distracting, but enjoy. This is the first image, first of January. This is the first one we're sharing. Uh, conveniently, it also features as the image inside Graham Sacker's The Suicide Club, which is all about units, um, their locations, their formation and their disbandment, the dates and the statistics around those units. So you can buy that a copy of that on our shop. But Graham enjoyed this photo. He likes it. It, it. it captures quite a lot about what looks like a whole machine gun section. You know, the number one, two, uh, three, four, five, and possibly the number six or the section commander. I think that's the number six actually, or the subsection commander. Uh, the, 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 he's got a revolver that might well be his rangefinder on the floor there. So it looks like it is the whole section. There's nothing on the back of this postcard, sadly, to tell us anything more about it. But let's have a look at the detail of it. So we have, as we said, the, 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 the number one sat down here by the gun. Um, he is wearing uh, his, it looks like they're all in field service marching order, are they? Or just him? So he has his large pack, or his valise, on his back there. Looks like you can just see the side of a revolver ammunition pouch, so it would be the same up here. It's quite interesting that you can see that on his left-hand side, possibly carrying two of them. Or, like this chap here, he's actually got his revolver ammunition pouch behind his revolver. This is the number two I'm working on now. Um, and he has the pattern 14, or the 1914 pattern, uh, to not talk backwards, uh, the 1914 pattern ammunition pouch there. Um, now this is described actually in one of the, um, and we sort of talked about it I think in another video, but this can, you know, wear, how, to, how to wear the, uh, the 1914 pattern ammunition pouches on this other side, because they're all wearing 1914 pattern equipment, it's worth saying, um, with the sort of typical snake buckle there buckle there so that's uh, yeah the wartime expedient leather equipment because webbing required specialist manufacturers to make so leather could be constructed by anybody that could sew or saddle work or anything like that so um one of the reasons so this is described in the machine gun school instructors manual which again you can buy from our shop lots of product plugs here i'm afraid um but you can fit a 25 round length of ammunition in uh, ammunition belt in this pouch so they wouldn't necessarily or you can carry lots of other things it's a useful pouch unlike the 1908 pattern web equipment 
which the pouches just fit the charger clips for the Lee Anfield rifles. They don't fit anything else. The 1914 pattern equipment is much more useful. So it's interesting to see that here. Let's say you can just see his um, spare ammunition pouch for the revolver, which had six or 12 rounds there. You can see his there. His, uh, the, this range, we're going to call this chap the range taker up here. Um, you can see that his... Um, you know, pouches there but it's possible he also has one in there as well so he's carrying two lots of ammunition again that's something that we're aware of it um, as being a machine gunner thing so carrying the extra revolver ammunition because it wasn't just a, I suppose it wasn't just a personal weapon it was a because of their location and stuff, they're likely to be used in battle. Um, it was talk about the equipment while we go. And then and the other chaps are wearing you know, the standard pair of 1914 pattern leather equipment pouches. Um, they have uh, the, the, the straps there and they have their small pack. They have a sacks down the side and then the water bottles on the other side as well. Um, I can't tell you much about the uniforms as I never can. Maybe we'll learn stuff over the year um, as we go through these photos, but please do feel free to comment and tell us. But it certainly looks like uh, this chap here is in quite a tight fitting uniform um, and it seems to be emitting or they're well stretched out the pleats and stuff that are on the pockets. Uh, so that may be some form of austerity pattern or you know, a later pattern. Uh, of service dress jacket you can just see the bulge in the front of these here which is where a um, first field dressing or a shell dressing i'm not quite sure which actually in the great war but it could be the first field dressing fits into a small pocket there and for a period actually their respirators or their hoods um, were sewn into the sewn into the jackets as well to be worn so uh, but you can see on the number two at least he does have the oh both ways actually he has um, looks like the straps for carrying the hood um, in its pouch so the anti-gas hood in its pouch there um, can't see that on the three four and five but that might be evidence of it on the range taker there as well so let's clear that off let's try and tell you a little bit more well obviously they're all wearing the machine gun corps cap badge on their service dress caps and the machine gun corps shoulder titles on their service dress jackets um, they haven't got any identifying letter they're likely to be infantry but as we've explained again in previous vids and hopefully we'll see some as we go through these videos here you will sometimes see the mgc with an i below it or a c um, you know the h for heavy so infantry cavalry heavy and then m for motors or quite common you see just m m g uh, for the motor machine guns so yeah we, we'll flag those when we see them in these photos um let's this is obviously one of the gun photos so let's oh you can you, you can see that they're let's just uh, talk about those for a minute so they're but or both armed with number three um lee Anfield rifles uh, they're wearing their putties um wrapped nicely there and then so let, yeah that's pretty much all i can tell you about the men um although it's great yeah there's, there's, you, it is nice to see the section together and i know i spoke to graham about this so it, it's great to see that so let's not overlook the fact that that is likely to be a whole section as they trained and as they went out to france the range finder is a bar and stroud number um number 12 my, oh, at this point it's a number two later it changes to number 12 um, so the designation changes to separate from the artillery or the infantry um, but it's a mark three of a variant uh, various type so um, it might be a mark four but i'm pretty sure this period it's going to be a mark three normally we can tell that it's a mark three four or five by the the, the position of these straps um, on later variants they attach the strap to the end there now this is what we we've been using mark threes in our um in our training videos which hopefully you've seen uh, as this is a gun video as i said yeah a gun picture um we can have a look at the gun as well so it's a um later single arch top cover there so you know 1916 onwards gun it does have the early mark one tangent sight slide there as, as used with the maxim it has also fitted the strap here um, we got to see one of these uh, original uh, seal patterns actually the, the strap there for um at the National Army Museum's Reserve Collection a couple of weeks ago. They are marked up as part of the auxiliary mount. So that's the little tripod 
uh, that fits on the front of the gun here. Um, that's part of that equipment, which obviously this isn't fitted with that. So that's interesting that the, the strap is on the gun, but it enables you to carry it um, easily. You know, and then you, on the front band of the tripod, you have another strap. So you can, you can carry the gun easily without having to touch it, um, particularly important when it's hot. Uh, what else? So uh, you have the elevating wheel, the Mark 1 elevating wheel, and the Mark 1 direction dial. Um, so that's yeah, that this fits this one here fits over the elevating wheel and is graduated with um, lines. And then that's this isn't movable, so zero is at the front, I'm pretty sure zero is at the front. Um, and then everything works off of that zero. Whereas the Mark 2 you can actually turn and swivel, but no, the Mark 1 is a single piece. Um, we've got the flat muzzle cone, we have you can just see there the um condenser boss connect the thread protector so that screws over the thread um, to protect that and then the cork that goes inside it um, it's obviously a fluted jacket uh, you know it's yeah let's say 1916 gun there's no belt of ammunition or anything in this posed photo um, quite often you'll see there is but that's quite an extensive deep dive at this photo it's interesting that yeah see it looks you can just see up here you see it under his um, air pellet, under his shoulder strap, that little, you can just see that he might well be wearing the large pack, but quite low uh, on there, because his haversack is probably down by his side, so that isn't the tab off his haversack, that's the tab off his large pack, but they're quite low, so that's interesting that they seem to be wearing large packs as well. Right, let's just take a quick look at the back. As I said, there's no detail on the back of this postcard. Sometimes we'll see stuff written here, um, but there is a price that's obviously the price that it's been sold on the collector's market at six pounds um don't know when that was we don't know when these were bought when they were last on the market so this is just fair warning don't take any notice of the prices i would you know probably pitch this um a fair bit higher now certainly with the likes of ebay so yeah it's a really detailed postcard sometimes we'll see uh, details of where they're from as well who took them so let's uh, look at some other postcards and see what we can tell you so this is another group shot um, and this one is just catalogued or negative number 24A. And you see these scratched on quite a lot of the photos, um, particularly where what would seem to have happened is a photographer would turn up at the barracks of a day. Um, perhaps they were there all the time. I don't know. Somebody may well know more. Turn up at the barracks and take a series of photos. You'll probably see the same gun over a number of the postcards, um, just with different men sat behind it. So they'd grab one out of the... Um, training room it wouldn't be the gun that they were on but it, it's uh, yeah it's interesting to see them in different states of dress they're literally there as they turn up so again we think we have another subsection here or another machine gun detachment and yeah we've got one two three four five six another six men working together um, doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, yeah, the guy sat behind the gun is the number one you know, might be um, they just I think it's just probably where they ended up sitting down most of the time uh, you know who, who knows um, so what have we got what we can tell you they're all in sweaters actually which is really interesting like these roll neck sweaters um, which I've not seen before so you know hopefully that will be of interest you can see this chap here is in his collarless shirt that's to be expected and then the number two position this chap here is in his service dress jacket with the MZ, MGC shoulder title his service dress cap as with these with their MGC cap badges as well so that's quite nice it looks like this chap at the back has a towel over his shoulders I wonder if this guy here is cutting his hair um, so you sort of semi candid shot perhaps he's cutting his hair looks like he's got something in his hand there so yeah maybe um, certainly got a cigarette on the go as well which is quite nice to see in these photos because they were you know they were candid they weren't all formal and staged um, let's tell you about the gun a little bit more so you know uh, again looks like a single arch top cover so about a 1916 onwards manufactured gun mark one transient sight slide with um, this time we see it fitted with the auxiliary tripod the sangster mount um, it also has this loop at the front, which, uh, you yeah, the leather loop at the front, it looks, doesn't look like it actually has one at the back. So going with the gun in the previous, uh, previous postcode together, they'd be able to carry it as one piece. Um, but not, not at this point. We also have the Mark one, uh, direction dial on here, but it doesn't look like it's fitted with the, uh, elevating wheel cover. 
And that might be a Mark II. It looks a slightly wider direction dial, but who knows? Um, not without a yeah, really good close-up. I'd, I'd say it's a Mark I. It certainly looks to be the direction dial pointer seems to be simpler than the Mark II on there as well. So the gun is numbered. Look, you can see the number five with a white band painted um, below it. That might mean it's drill purposes. Um, but the number five will mean it's tripod number five. Sometimes we'll see the, the, the gun marked up on the front cap, the end cap there. It's number five. It's got its Mark I um, muzzle cone on the front too and it looks to be a number three belt box just the wooden single lid number three mark one maybe a mark two depending on whether it's got a tin lining inside and then there's an ammunition belt rolled up inside standard mark one strip type ammunition belt rolled up inside no ammunition just put through the gun the feed block of the gun um, nice to see these uh, the stones and stuff all around the edge of the doorway here uh, in front of their hut um, the stones are all painted white to help them find the path at night time um, but also as many sort of national servicemen will go on about um, you know it's something to keep soldiers busy uh, is to clean and whitewash stones whether that happened so much in the Great War when they're actually busy um, you know training and preparing to, for war you know I don't know um, whether the whitewashing was there to serve any decorative purpose or whether it truly had that practical purpose so uh, yeah let's just um, that's probably all I can tell you at this point. So let's just flip over the flip the postcard over and see what's on the reverse. Not much information about the postcard itself here, but you know it's obviously a blank postcard. But First World War Joe Stewart. Now Graham's database. Uh, we've had a look on it to see what options we've got, and we've got five choices for who Joe Stewart could be. So it doesn't narrow it down. Um, but you know, just interesting to see. This also looks to be added later, possibly by Byro rather than contemporary. So possibly been sat in a family collection and just Joe Stewart and could in a Stewart family, possibly, or maybe they don't even know who Joe Stewart is. It's um it's frustrating when you get postcards like this. Sometimes it's better when they're blank because you don't get sent down the wrong rabbit holes. But maybe somebody recognised one of those six soldiers might be a Joe Stewart. Um, who knows? Now this postcode, I wanted to start with the reverse actually. So it's a French postcard, carte postale, so produced in France. And we can see here, uh, R, probably Robert, uh, Guillermo, uh, Bus, Bluc, AC, Paris. So somebody in company, um, obviously produced in, in, in France um, and based in Paris. But as with the British postcards, they're likely to have gone out to you know, training areas and stuff set up for the day and um, yeah, behind the lines and made some money from photographs of, of the troops that they then print on the postcards and those troops could send. So this one says, Dear Bertie or BT, uh, this is to give you some idea how we are prepared for when there is a gas attack. I don't expect for a minute you can find me. I am enclosing another photo so as to show you the position I am uh, in, or possibly, or of me or something. Um, your appreciate. What's that say? What's that? Your affectionate cousin, Claude. No idea who Claude is, but really interesting to see the reverse of it because when we look at the front of it, um, it helps explain the photo a little bit more. Five. So this is the front of that photo, and uh, first thing that jumps out is obviously they are all in their respirators, small box respirators by the looks of it, with um, additional goggles over the top, or maybe that's an early respirator um, that has these separate the goggles, so they have some, or maybe they're just wearing them for the photo, I don't know, somebody that knows more about anti-gas equipment in the Great War could tell me. Um, now, what detail have we got here? Uh, firstly, it's a souvenir of the 2nd of July 1916, so you know, mid-war period, just after the Somme. Now, what's not really 100% clear is whether the um, the postcard taken that day or you know, whether they've come out of the line or what. But obviously, the MGC has been formed. You can see that they are wearing their machine gun court shoulder titles there, um, which was formed October 1915. So it's interesting to see, you know, just to have this date against it but we can't absolutely for certain say it was taken on that date or whether a few days later 2nd July was maybe then when they went into battle this particular group and um, went into action who knows um, but what can we, what jumps out is this is a Maxim not a Vickers um, you know the Vickers replaced the Maxim was due to have done so by the time the war starts or certainly on a slow slow rule 
roll out um, but Maxims are still in the line and Maxim, uh, Ma Maxim here is with this group of machine gun corps men still by 1916 so really interesting to see it actually quite late they'll stay in for a little bit longer um, and we've got a paper coming out some point this year hopefully about the introduction of Maxi uh, the Vickers and different machine guns and stuff in the Great War so uh, I'll explain that a little bit more uh, number three belt box again uh, strap off the side of it which is always interesting because it actually is quite easy to carry like that you can look at our ammunition boxes videos to find out more um, belt of ammunition in there looks full uh, presumably that's live uh, the ball ammunition live rather than any drill or a nut um, it has a muzzle attachment on the Maxim, which was added when they changed them to 303 rather than 45. Uh, it's on its Mark IV tripod. The Mark IV tripod has the Mark I direction dial in. It has the Mark I elevating wheel cover as well. Uh, the Mark IV tripod is what was used with the Vickers and the Maxim. It was introduced in 1906. Um, what can we tell you about the web equipment? They're actually carrying, um, wearing 1908 pack. 19, 1908 pattern web equipment rather than the 14 pattern leather equipment um, some people say that the 14 pattern leather equipment was you know, was exchanged for 08 pattern once it was in the field but it doesn't seem to be the case with machine gun core men they certainly you know, retain that um, 14 pattern stuff a lot longer um, possibly because the utilization of the pouches it's got his bayonet fitted at the back um, on these rifles as well now I would hazard to say that actually these look like 1903 pattern bayonets not 1907 they look a bit shorter um, that might just be the perspective they're being held at but it could be 1903 pattern bayonets not 1907 so yeah a few um, a few inches shorter there just a bit of photo detail you can see in the background here this um, sheet those are photos uh, those are sort of background tableaus that you can see match up in many different photos obviously the gun and everything doesn't fit on that one uh, we've got a lance corporal chevron there um, other than that I think we're looking at standard equipment interesting to see the uh, cap badge mounted on the helmet as well now as the first postcard alluded to there is a second postcard that a matched pair Dear BT, this is to show you the positions of us in the other photo. I repeat, I expect, sorry, you can pick me out. Hoping you were quite well, I'm your affectionate cousin, Claude. Uh, so we can turn the photo over and we can, you know, they're both same time look and they're almost exactly the same. So I don't know which one is Claude in this photo, but you can now see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven faces. Uh, again, likely to be a subsection um, or a detachment of the machine guns. Uh, we've got one eye armed with his revolver, which you can actually see better if you flip back at the other photo. Looks, it's not a Webley. Um, it could be a Smith & Wesson. Uh, what else can we see? That's Obviously the gun is still the same. They've still got this board of souvenir of the 2nd July they are no longer wearing their steel helmets but you can see them wearing their machine gun core cap badges a couple of which have the um, have the soft caps with the ear the winter the winter soft cap and interestingly this chap here um, I can't see if anybody else is wearing um, they put the strap like around the badge so you've got the badge here bad to do on a, a, um, a light background but sorry about that oh wait, wait a minute, I'll tell you what just give me one moment to change the color there we go so you've got the gun cap badge with the crown there and normally you just see the chin strap on the service dress cap going underneath it but you can see on these that it goes over the top now um, the reason that I think for that is and I don't know somebody else can corroborate is that this top strap actually keeps the badge in so the badge will have a, a slider on the back of it um, that goes into a little pocket or a slit on the front of the cap I think it's a slit on this one and so then you've got the, the badge here outside now that can come out quite easily so what you do is you put your chin strap above that and it stops the cap badge coming out so if you ever wonder why that is you know hope for, I think that's the reason why um, maybe Claude's the guy on the gun who knows but anyway you know BT could BT would have been able to pick him out we sadly can't in this photo we've got another small group shot um, at the hut probably at um, Clipstone, Gra you know, Grantham, the camps around the training centre. So we have um, the gun, uh, let's do the guys, you've got three guys, one sat behind the gun, looks like he might have a small identifying patch on his shoulder, I can't work out what that is, um, 
but this uh, it also looks like he might have a slip on over his epaulette which is interesting the mgc did have some slip-ons or they certainly exist on the collector's market this might be a photo of one being worn um the other two are wearing their brass shoulder titles again without any branch distinguishing mark but highly likely to be infantry uh the gun has a number two on the tripod oh i've changed to um black sorry uh number two on the tripod there um, and it is carrying its auxiliary tripod on the front there and you can see that loop at the back again he hasn't got a loop at the front which is quite you know we're yet to see a gun with both aren't we um, it looks like he's using a number seven belt box so not the wooden number three uh, it doesn't look like it's a number eight at this point it's number seven um, with the two-part metal lid uh, and it looks to be missing the um, the felt lining there so they were added to stop gas getting into it later on empty ammunition belt as always gun has a uh, single arch top cover and uh, um, Mark 1 tangent site looks to be quite it's not lightened along the sides this is probably a 1917 dated um, onwards photo uh, particularly with the ammunition box there as well guys in their service dress you can just see the putties of this chap here there um, but you can see you yeah, know they are all sat on a ground sheet um, even soldiers don't like getting wet bums in training if they can help it um, you know jaunty angle on the cap uh, you know, not really much else much to, to look at on this. There's that negative number again, 1570A, that's scratched onto the negative and will appear on all the post all, all the pictures from that negative. Very little to tell you on the rear of this postcard. Same production as the previous one, um, by the looks of it. Same pattern. Yeah, somebody could look at all these postcards and learn a lot about mail systems and stuff of the wartime period as well, I'm sure. Looks like this is Al Hutchings. Again, checking Graham's database. There was no option for Al Hutchings. That doesn't mean it's a it's not a complete database. Um, you know, he's got about 60% coverage of the core now, so 120,000 out of potentially 200,000 men. Um, that builds all the time. So Al Hutchings isn't there. Maybe it will be one day. Five. Now, this is a great shot of the whole section of um, the, so what have we got? We've got C, number two section, C Company, the Machine Gun Battalion. Now, in the middle of this sign is a divisional symbol, probably. Uh, and there's some notes scribbled on the back of the postcard that might that say like put second uh, it does seem to look like the, the stars that are on the second division um, emblem for the great war so it's highly likely uh, that this has been matched up as second second machine gun battalion c company number two section so that would date it post march 1918 um, not really sure what else can date it at that perhaps we've got some wound stripes and some overseas service stripes along some good good conduct um yeah service chevrons on the forearms of some of the men that have been out a little bit longer um but yeah so we you know and we've got a couple of medals we've got an officer there with a military medal um or military cross sorry by the looks of it and something else maybe a 1914 star on those ribbons uh and it looks like we've got a military medal on the uh, sergeant here as well um they're all obviously wearing their service pattern uh with, with standard uniforms with the machine gun corps cap badges on their um on their service dress caps the one a couple of the interesting things is the majority of them are wearing their putties but a couple of them are wearing long leather boots they're likely to be the drivers for the limbered wagons as opposed to the machine gunners themselves so they were part of you know the machine gun corps they weren't service corps drivers or anything like that um so they wore leather boots because they were riding the horses uh we do have two officers in a section and and this is both of those officers they would run a subsection each um sometimes or, and there would be a, one of them one of the subalterns would be senior and you can just see the um so he's a lieutenant um and as is Pete, they're both lieutenants I, I think he's got two he might have a it looks like he's got two, two side by side there stars um but he could just have a single perhaps in the middle so he might be the second lieutenant in the section um got the sergeant then we got the we've got is it corporals it looks like we've got corporals on each of the guns so we've got four guns um as i said that's the, that's a section and it looks like they've got we've got some number six boxes which have um you know this no rib round here and this flap goes uh, both ways and then it looks like we've got some number eight belt boxes that might be a number seven um and yeah that's a number eight there as well all we can tell that, that all that by the, the the ribs and the lid and, and how they're fixed there um we're going to do some more on sort of spotting you know, spotting the details on the guns in these different photos at some point uh, other than that we can't really see much about the guns it looks like they've all got their number um their, their mark one direction dials and their uh 
good. We've got one elevating wheel on that one and one on that one, but it doesn't look like there's one on there or there. They're a little bit too thin. Um, ammunition belts look full, um, and yeah, so let's just assume the guns aren't cocked and loaded because that's a bad day for the photographer. Uh, and yeah, we've got that one looks like it could have a five arch top cover. Um, so an earlier sort of pre-1916 production gun. This guy's wearing gloves. Actually, is he the only one wearing gloves? Yeah, could be. Um, we've got, is that guy wearing a range taker skillet arms badge? So the R in Laurel. Um, maybe he is a range taker. Um, uh, what else have we got? No, that's probably, probably it. It's probably all I can tell you at this point. They haven't got their auxiliary tripods or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, that seems to be the Machine Gun Battalion, you know, of second division uh, and quite a detailed photo. Uh, and here's the detail that we've got on the back of that photo. So number two section, C Company, MG Bat, Bat uh, Machine Gun Court. And so somebody has then later written second. So maybe they've matched up that patch. It doesn't quite match. The second infative um, seems to have a, an additional star in the middle. Uh, so, you know, if somebody can recognise it or perhaps tell, tell us that that is the right patch for, for um, or the right symbol for the second division, that would be great. But yeah, no other information on the back of this postcard whatsoever. Now, this is another postcard, looks in exactly the same position. It's the same gun, it's number two, look on the tripod there as the one that is marked at 15700A. So this is three three groups along. Um, I've got to say, I haven't looked to see whether it's the same faces. I don't think it is. Uh, but now we're only faced with two guys. Uh, all the gun details are exactly the same. But you can just see in the background here, this wooden box, that is the spare parts box. And again, it's marked up for number two on the end there. So it's nice to see those, um, those numbers matching. But yeah, so they're having their photo. It's their turn to have their photo taken with the gun. Um, you know, it's interesting to see the series so close. Um, you know, maybe these, uh, these will turn up somewhere a set of negatives for everyone but I doubt it gosh they would be so volatile anyway um, what is nice on this uh, set of putties if you can just see the crisscross pattern he is a specialist um, putty winder so he has done a crisscross pattern with his putties to make them look extra special and smart good for him I've tried putties I can barely get them to stay on my legs as of that postcard completely blank so of no value to us really um other than say it's exactly the same as the what you know the the other ones in this sort of what i'm going to call as a grantham series they all look to be done at the machine gun training center the machine gun school um i hope you've enjoyed that for the first week uh and you see the photos being shared every day uh throughout 2022 as part of our machine gun corps 2022 commemorations so to commemorate the disbandment of the machine gun corps and the legacy of machine gunnery that it gave the british army the infantry battalions and the cavalry regiments took back over their machine gun platoons uh that they and their vickers machine guns in 1922 and you know, were then thus equipped until the second world war when they were brigaded once again into machine gun battalions but the machine gun corps would exist no longer uh so you know Please do engage with us over this year. Please do learn more about machine gunnery um, and you know, come along, support us at any events we do. But please do support us on Patreon as well, where you can find out more information about not only the machine gun, but machine gun corps and the projects that we're doing. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.